All right, welcome back to the second video in the LangChain video series. In this video, we're going to be looking at tools and chains. So these are the key building blocks in LangChain that you're going to be using for building a lot of the apps and a lot of the things that you're going to be doing. So these are, are different things, but you'll see that they interrelate quite a lot as well. So first up, what are tools in LangChain? Tools are the individual components that LangChain uses as links in the chain. So these are a variety of sort of little sub modules that you can use when combined with a language model to do a task. And that's what makes up a chain overall. So that some of the example tools would be like the Python read, evaluate, print loop that's going on. This allows you to basically export something out as code and run it as code and take the output, the printed output from that and feed it back into a model with a chain like that. You've got things like the search engine API. You've got Wolfram Alpha, which allows you to query the Wolfram Alpha engine for facts and data, and then bring that back in and use that in a, a large model or you know in one of the other uh, tools that you're using. Just like you query Wolfram Alpha, you can also query things like Google Search and the news API. So these allow you to basically get external data and external results and feed them you know back into your app that you're that you're using so what is a chain in langchain so a chain is really just you know made up of links of tools so you can kind of think of like each of the tools as being a link in an overall chain these can be as simple as linking a prompt template and a large language model and then you've got a llm chain which is one of the most common chains that you will see in LangChain. It also can be much more complicated. So you can get things with multiple links going through multiple steps of a whole process, which might include multiple large language models in there, as well as a variety of different utility tools, etc. The main thing to understand is that in a chain, the output of one link is what's going to become the input of the next link in there. So when these chains are running, you might take something as an output from a large language model, feed that into a query of Wolfram Alpha, bring that back, run that again through a large model to formulate a response that you're going to give back to the user. That's an example of a chain. So there are three categories of chains. Currently, we have generic chains, which are basically used for building other chains. Uh, utility chains, this is where a lot of the utilities and tools actually are. Then you also have asynchronous chains for doing as async functions and tasks like that. So looking at the generic chains, by far the most common chain that you will see is a, a large language model chain. And this is basically, you know, going to take some sort of input format that with a prompt template, run that through a large language model and return. It. And this is the kind of chain that we looked at very briefly in the first video. Second kind of chain that you'll see in generic chains are transformation chains. So this allows you to basically take something and run some code in a function on the actual inputs or outputs of a of another chain or another link in another chain. So that could be simply taking the response back from a large language model and then running it through a regex to check if there's something in it or you're doing a variety of things like that. And that can be, you know, both on the input or on the output for this. And then the other generic chain is sequential chains. So this is just basically multiple chains and allowing you to join them together. So you'll find that while chains are made up of individual tools, they can also be made up of other chains that get joined together. So utility chains is where a lot of the magic happens. And there are a variety of these. So this is not all of them. There's, there's a lot more than this. And I expect that there'll be a lot more added over time as well. The PAL chain is a very interesting one. And maybe I'll do a, a video just about this because this is actually based on an interesting paper of using a language model that, that converts the reasoning of a question to Python code and then allows you to run that and return that response back. Another interesting one is like the SQL database chain. So this allows you to take natural language, convert it to a SQL query, and then return that information, which you might then feed back in to another large language model chain 
with a different prompt and then take the output of that and give that back to your user. So you see that this is a quite common thing to basically go through an LLM chain, go out to something else, come back to another LLM chain, and then go back to the user. The bash chain is another sort of thing where it allows you to run bash commands. The requests chain allows you to go out and request a particular HTML page and get the data from that and bring that and pass that back to the next link in the chain. And then you've got a variety of API chains which let you do things like query different APIs that are already set up inside of Langchain. All right, so let's jump into the code and look at how we can you know, build some of these things with code. Okay, in this notebook, I'm gonna go through the tools and then linking those tools to basically make chains. I'll show you a few common chains and we'll look at some of the others as we go through as well. So you want to make sure that you've got Langchain installed. You've got your libraries for the various large language models installed, set up your API keys, etc. The first one is just going to be a really simple chain. And this is by far the most common chain that you will see. And this is basically just linking a large language model with a prompt and then feeding something with a prompt template and feeding something into this. So here you can see I'm setting up the OpenAI DaVinci 3 model. We're going to set temperature to zero. We're going to just set the max tokens. A lot of these will be set by default if, you know, that this is a standard model that it defaults to. I've got a little article in here. So what I'm going to be doing is actually fact extraction. So here I've basically taken an article all about Coinbase. And so this is quite a long article. If we look at it, it's 3,500 characters. And what we want to do is basically extract out the key facts from this. And then we're going to play around with that and try rewriting those facts into kind of a new piece of content. So first off, we need our prompt template. So our prompt template is going to basically take in the input. That's what we've got up here. And then we need the actual prompt. So the prompt here is going to be extract the key facts out of this text. Don't include opinions. Give each fact a number and keep them short sentences. And then I'm going to basically just the input is going to be this text input that we've got here. All right. So making the chain is actually pretty simple. We basically just say we're going to be using the large language model chain. We pass in the large language model, and then we pass in the prompt template that we're going to be using. So here I've got the fact extraction prompt, and we're passing that in, right? and then we can basically run it. And you can see that after we run it, sure enough, this has gone through, and it's done a pretty good job of getting out the facts from our article. All right, so you could play around with getting better prompts here. There's certainly, this is like the whole world of prompt engineering. It's worth testing out different prompts for the kind of content that you want to use. I, but he, here enough, it's done a pretty good job. We've got 10 facts out of this that have each come from the article that we've got above there. So now what we want to do is chain, we're going to make a new one. And then we're going to chain some of these things together. So the next one I'm going to do is also a large language model chain. And this is going to be taking those facts and rewriting them. But we're going to rewrite them as if it was like an investor report here. So you can see here, we're going to say, okay, you're a Goldman Sachs analyst. Take the following list of facts and use them to write a short paragraph for investors. Don't leave out key info. We could also put, probably should put in something there. Don't make up info as well. But here's the, the facts that we're going to pass in. So again, this is a large language model chain. We pass in the language model. We're still using the original one we defined above. We pass in the prompt template, and then we can run this. And you can see, sure enough, it's come back and it's written a pretty coherent, nice little article there. And it's way shorter than what we had before. Right. So the idea here is that we're trying to doing a little bit of a kind of summary, but we also want to maybe take those facts and put them into something. And this is where you could even play with this. Just to give you an idea, I've made another one of these that takes these facts and turns them into triples for a knowledge graph. So here we're saying, okay, take the following list of facts and turn them into triples for a knowledge graph. And you can, I'm passing in the facts, just like I passed in the facts that we had up there again. Define your chain. It's going to be a large language model. It's going to have a prompt template. And then you can see, sure enough, this has gone and made triples. Now, I could have gotten it to do in a particular style. Like if I wanted to 
show these in D3JS or something like that, or some sort of format for Neo4j or something like that, I would be able to do that in that style to get the triples. But just here, without asking it for a specific style, it's got the sense of that, like Coinbase released fourth quarter or earnings, Coinbase generated, and it's got rev revenue. And maybe we would want to guide it a little bit more with this, but just to show you some of the ideas that you could do with this thing. I Next up, we want to chain these together. So now we're actually taking a sort of small chain and chains can be made out of either tools or they can be made out of other chains. So we're taking a small chain he here that we've got, or the couple of small chains that we've got up there, the fact extractor, and then the sort of investment analysis, a rewriter kind of thing. And we're putting them together. And we're just going to do that with a simple sequential chain. I, so the simple sequential chain is just like a standard sort of sequential model in something like Keras or PyTorch, where you're basically just going from a to B to C, you're not really doing anything fancy in there. We've also got the, this idea of that the inputs from one will become the output, sorry, the outputs from one of them will become the inputs for the next chain. So you can see here, we've basically said the full chain, we're going to have our fact extraction chain, and we're going to have our investor update chain here. And now when I take the original article and run it through, it's going to do both those things. So you can see here now it's basically done the fact extraction and now it's done the rewriting and then it's finished the chain here. So I, this is one of the ways that, I, that we're able to link these things together rather than having to rewrite code to do, to do one thing and then do the other thing, etc. And we sure enough, we can see, okay, if we take this, the response out that we got, we've got this, our response back of what the investor update did, even though we passed in the original article now. So you could try this for testing the idea of using this versus like a, just a one summary chain or something. If you wanted to incorporate the triples somewhere, that's something that you could do with this kind of thing as well. So by far the most common chains that you will see are made up of just a large language model and a prompt template. There are a bunch of other cool chains and tools though in LangChain. And the next one I'm going to show you is the PAL math chain. So I may make a video about this whole paper and the concepts in this, but just let me quickly show you to it, show it here. I, so what this basically does is it uses a different large language model. We're using one of the code models here. And what we're going to basically do is this is going to be used for when we've got some kind of number problem here. So this is an example from the Langchain documentation. So Jan has three times the number of pets. You can see that it's basically like a math equation. And what the what we're going to be what we're basically prompting the model to do here, and we're using an inbuilt prompt that's there, but we're prompting it to basically take this written statement and turn it into a small Python function, which will then calculate the math rather than just guess it with a language model and then return the out output for them. So the idea here, this one's from uh, one of the FLAN papers, the recent FLAN paper. And I think this one is actually an interesting one. So this is pretty simple math, right? The cafeteria had 23 apples. If they used 20 for lunch and bought six more, how many apples do they have? The, the issue with this is that if you've used the big language models, yes, they will probably get this right. But if you're using something smaller, if you're using even just like the T5 models, the majority of the T5 models will get something like this wrong. Rather than just rely on one of those sort of to do it, here we can basically use this PAL system where we're just getting it to basically take this data and rewrite it. And you can see here, it's writing a Python function. It uses the doc string to talk to put in what we actually had up there. We start off with Apple's initial. So it's making just the variables and assigning them. Apple's used, Apple's bought. And then Apple's left equals Apple's initial minus Apple's used plus Apple's bought. Sure enough, then it gives us our result and it gives us the nice accurate result here. So rather than rely on the language model to do this, what we're doing is just getting the language model to rewrite it in something that we can basically run in the Python read evaluate print loop. And then we can take that output. Now we could take this output and then feed it back into 
another large language model and have it rephrase it conversationally so that it could tell you, ah, the amount of apples left is, or we could just take the output straight from this module. Another example of a tool chain, which is, can be really useful, are the API tool chains. So here I'm just showing you the example of the one for, for weather information. So this basically we're setting up the API that we're going to be using for this. And what this is going to do is it's going to take in our queries. So we're basically just setting up large language mod. By default, this is going to be the DaVinci 003. We're setting up the docs for it. So even the docs, and then it's able to then write an API call based on those docs. And that's what the, this is going to output. And then this is going to then query that API with that call and see the result we get back. So here you can see, I'm asking it, what is the temperature in Bedok, Singapore in degrees Celsius? And it writes this, it writes this whole URL for basically querying this here. It's worked out that, okay, temperature unit should be Celsius. And sure enough, it basically gives us back the temperature right now in, it gives us location and the answer back. So what it actually returned was, right. And then that has then gone into a large, in, back into the language model to rewrite it in something rather than just a, a JSON format into something that a user would understand here. I can see we can also ask it a little bit more vague questions and obviously it can only answer what the API can give you back here. It's, it's basically giving this back and it's telling us, yeah, that, okay, the a number of things in this JSON response indicate that it's raining. The danger with this one that you need to be careful is that often the docs plus the, uh, the URL plus the JSON will go beyond the number of tokens that your large language model can handle. So you can get errors if you're going above 4,000 tokens on the DaVinci. The, the other thing too, is to think about is that this is pretty expensive, right? If we're paying two cents per thousand tokens, and we've just put in 4,000 tokens just to get back the weather or something, this is not always the most efficient way to do it. But it does show you that LangChain can do these things. And you could write some of this to make your own API calls for something that you want. All right. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the whole sort of chains around conversation and incorporating memory into those. So I'll see you there. Don't forget, if you find this information useful, click subscribe so that you get told when the new videos are coming out. Thanks for watching.